Hi there, it's Dr. Keaton from Mainly Veterinary Dentistry, and we are here today to talk about anesthesia and dentistry. One question that people often have when they come in for a consult here is, will their pet have to go under anesthesia for their dentistry procedure? And the answer is yes. Um, and there's several reasons for why anesthesia is necessary. Uh, one reason is that when we do dentistry here, we do a full oral health assessment of your pet's mouth, just like you would have done at your dental office. So we are going to probe and chart every single tooth in the mouth looking for pockets and problems. And we definitely can't do that on an awake exam on cats and dogs. Um, and then the other big reason is because two thirds of the tooth in your cat and dog is beyond the gum line. So we need to take dental x-rays, full mouth dental x-rays, again, just like you would have done at your dental office, to really fully assess the health of all those teeth. And we have to put a really small dental x-ray plate in their mouth and take several shots to get a full set of x-rays. And again, we cannot do that on a wake cat or dog. Um, so those are a couple of big reasons. A third reason is safety. You know, we have our hands in their mouth, we're trying to do things and, you know, we don't want to get bit. So it's a safety reason for us uh, and the staff here at, at mainly that dentistry. So those are the reasons why we need um, anesthesia. And then we wanted to address some misconceptions about anesthesia as well. So yes, your pet is going to be under general anesthesia for a cohab procedure here. Um, but the, the good news is that we can keep that general anesthesia a little bit lighter than we would say need for a spay or a neuter surgery because we just need them deep enough to do what we need to do in the mouth. Um, we, we don't need them as deep as we would need if we had an open abdomen doing a spay. So that's one, one benefit um, to doing dentistry. Um, but we also have a technician dedicated to anesthesia monitoring at all times. We have state-of-the-art monitors that monitor all the parameters that we should be checking. And with dentistry, if, if things aren't going well, if you know an animal isn't reacting to anesthesia well, we can wake them up really quickly um, if we need to. Um, but that is a very rare occurrence. Uh, the other way that we keep anesthesia light here is we use nerve blocks. So if we have to do oral surgery on a pet, we can completely block the sensation in the mouth, just like again at your human dental office. Um, so we can still keep anesthesia light despite having to do surgery. One of our main questions we get are whether, you know, geriatric patients should receive anesthesia. Um, so a, a catch-22 can be you're afraid of anesthesia, so you wait to do your dental care, and then now your dental disease is very advanced, and your comorbidities are also very advanced, but we're put in a situation where we have to do emergent care. So if I could tag on to what she's saying, preventative care along the way, while the animal is at a time where they are systemically more healthy, gives us all a little bit less risk than if we wait until their comorbidity is advanced and their dental care is emergent. So those are some of the, the misconceptions, you know, addressing those concerns. Um, you can read more on our website. We have a anesthesia blog post actually on our website at www.mainlyvetdentistry.com.